We're excited to be with you for this one, Courtney Lau, alongside national championship winning head coach Carolyn Peck. And this is going to be a big challenge for Tennessee, who has only had two full practices to get ready for Arkansas. We talked to Kelly Harper on Tuesday, and she said in 16 days she had played one game and had had one practice. So she's had to revamp quickly once this team was able to get back on the court and practice together. You know, they're hoping that Ray Burrell will continue to have that consistency that she's shown all season for the Lady Vols. Ray Burrell, remember, she moved into the starting lineup the last nine games of last year's season and has not looked back. She's been in the starting role ever since. She has gotten on the court because of her energy and effort. She has stayed in the starting lineup because of her consistency and efficiency. You look at what she was doing off the, off the bench and what she's doing scoring, but she's also shooting 48% from the floor and 45% from the three-point line but they're gonna have their hands full because they are taking on a red hot Arkansas team and they are led by Chelsea Dungy. This senior is pro ready. She can shoot the three and she does it prolifically. And then one of the meanest right to left crossover. She'll put you to sleep. Don't fall for the fake. Don't watch the hair. Don't watch the lashes. That crossover, she can take you to the basket. And so this Arkansas team is going to go as Chelsea Dungy goes because they're off and running, getting down the court. First, our great Her this season. She's had double figure points in every game. And get this, in their first two SEC games, averaging 22 and a half points per game. You got to watch out for number 33. First SEC game for Tennessee, and it's a doozy, if you will. Arkansas in town. We'll see how Tennessee fares against the ranked Razorbacks. And there's Ray Burrell right off the bat taking a shot. The one thing that Tennessee has an advantage with is the size. Got to look to see if the Lady Vols are going to get it inside. Two quick shots on either side. Renaya Davis comes out with it for Tennessee. They go inside to Marta Suarez, the freshman, who's not afraid of contact. Watch the mismatches. That's what the Lady Vols are going to look for. When they have a, a size advantage, they got to get the ball in the paint. Destiny Slocum drives and kicks to a waiting Amber Ramirez, and already two misses from behind the arc for Arkansas. And Tennessee turns it over. That's definitely a concern. Tennessee had 23 turnovers against Arkansas in their last meeting, and Michaela Daniels makes them pay. Daniels at that point, pushing in transition. She is one of the smartest decision makers when this team runs, gets out, and running fast. Exactly what how Mike Neighbors has built this Arkansas program to turn you over just like that and get out and run. There goes Destiny Slocum. To the corner, Daniels. First three of the night for Arkansas. We haven't had a chance to talk about it yet, but Mike Neighbors plays positionless basketball. And he doesn't call the spots on the floor or the positions that you run very typical. You've got your rabbit, your rackers, your locks, and your dragons. We'll be able to define that throughout this game. Dungy goes around Renaya Davis, but gets in trouble on the baseline. Arkansas is just a different style of play than you'll see from anybody in the SEC. And they can drive it to the rack, too. Amber Ramirez on the layup. Well, you've got to respect everybody on the court in a Razorback uniform that can shoot the three. Now, when you play them tightly, they're able to take you off the, take you off the dribble. The thing that Tennessee is going to have to decide is how they're going to de defend ball screens. Tennessee only had two full practices with everybody back from their COVID shutdown to get ready for Arkansas. Davis rattles in and out, and here comes Slocum on the push. Michaela Daniels, rebound by Tamari Key. Also keep in mind, Carolyn, Arkansas has played 12 games this season. This is only Tennessee's eighth game. You look at what Mike Neighbors did. He loaded 
he loaded his season early so that he could get a lot of games in, get that repetition. Yeah, I talked to Mike, we talked to him yesterday about how are you able so far, knock on wood, to not have to miss any games, get hit by that COVID pause. And she, he said that they spend as much time on seating on the bus to seating on the plane as they do their game planning to make sure that their players are spaced out because of contact tracing. Yeah, it's incredible. Arkansas is just one of three teams in the NCAA that has double figure wins that they've been able to play double figure games too. There's going to be a foul on Horston as Michaela Daniels had the ball. Now, Tennessee has a height advantage, but the ball screen defense is that's what's tough because you've got Tamari Key and whoever she's defending when that player goes out to set the screen, that means Tamari Key has got to defend a guard who is very good off the bounce for Arkansas. So Tennessee sends in Jordan Walker, number four in white. Dungey looking for space. This is a two off the front of the iron. Look at Marta Suarez bringing the ball at the floor. I like that freshman a lot. She's got great versatility about her game and a lot of composure as a freshman. So Renaya Davis is fouled. Arkansas up 7-2 to two here early on in the first quarter. Renaya Davis at the line for Tennessee. Tennessee playing its first SEC game of the season. They had to cancel their first two games on the schedule due to COVID-related issues last week, and Davis gets her first points. Now the key to this game, Courtney, is going to be who controls tempo. And right now, it's very choppy. That plays to the advantage of the Lady Vols. If it gets to be up and down and fast paced, that's more to the advantage of Arkansas. Arkansas, a high scoring team. They average almost 89 points per game as Dungy drops in the jumper. That's seventh in the nation. See, it's a place like that that I like about Chelsea Dungy. She is left-handed and is strong going left, but she has proven that she can also score going right. Ray Burrell on the board for Tennessee, their leading scorer. Slocum drives and kicks. Rebound by Tennessee. Lady Vols trailing by four here in the first quarter. Burrell, how'd she finish that one? It's that strength that she worked on <laughs> with the weights in the summer. See, this is the tempo that fits the Lady Vols. If you can make Arkansas have to make two, three passes in the offense, that plays to your advantage. Tennessee trailing by two here in the first quarter. Ray Burrell on a hot streak. It will end there. The three's off the mark. Dungy in and out. Tamari Key fighting for that rebound, and they're going to get Taylor Thomas on the foul. Arkansas leads it by two. Well, Chelsea Dungy. The pro-ready Razorback came in red hot, firing the score. But Ray Burrell for the Lady Balls is trying to keep them in this ball game. We're going to have a good one today. Arkansas on top of Tennessee here in Knoxville. It's been a wild last 10 days for the Tennessee Lady Vols. They actually played a game on December 28th. Last Monday, they beat Lipscomb. And then December 29th, they had to shut the program down due to a positive test and contact tracing within the Tier 1 staff of this Tennessee program. Finally, on Tuesday of this week, they were cleared to practice with everybody. And here they are two days later playing a top 15 team. Kelly Harper talked about how the precautions that they're having to make uh, to try to be extra careful. And Courtney, you went to practice, <laughs> even seeing 
the adjustments. I mean, these, these teams aren't able to get in their locker rooms. So a lot of times they're having to do things out on the court and spread out in order to be able to really keep that, that uh, contact tracing. They are wearing these trackers that let them know when they're six feet apart from each other. Yeah, so Tennessee actually brought out a big screen yesterday at practice to watch film on and everybody spread out on the court. This is a photo of that. They were watching film on Arkansas, not in their film room, but right here in the middle of the court on the summit. That's got to be distracting as a coach because you're used to having your team huddled together and you want to see their eyes and make sure everybody's paying attention. And so that's just a sign that as a player, you've got to be committed and not rely on that the coaches are checking to make sure that you're paying attention. You're all in because you want to play and you want to do everything you can to help your team win. Here's Dungy up off the glass. It's been a choppy first start here in Knoxville, Tennessee, playing its first SEC game. Arkansas already has two under its belt. They lost a close one to Kentucky and then beat Missouri on Monday. Marta Suarez. Mike Neighbors talked about the two losses. One was Maryland. Maryland could run with them, and then Kentucky really controlled the tempo of the game, and he was really concerned that Tennessee would do the exact same thing. Jordan Walker waiting for that screen. Slocum not giving her much room, almost threw it away. Ray Burrell in the paint, no whistle. Renaya Davis put back. See, that's the advantage that Tennessee has. Even if you miss shots because of your height advantage, your rebounding ability, you have the opportunity to just get a good shot and good position because you've got the rebounding position to get it and put it back up. You look at Renaya Davis inside. Cassie Keskatawat down low also. I mean, you're looking at 6'5", 6'2", inside. The tallest player that's on the court right now for Arkansas is probably about 6'1". But the thing we keep talking about with Tennessee, Carolyn, is that they've got to put the ball inside. They've got to give it to their posts. And I still feel like there's so much room for these posts to have more production in Tamari Key and Cassiana kush -Kittawa. Well, the drive as well, just like that. Jordan Horston has length as well. And just to get pieces, bites of that paint to give yourself an opportunity closer to the basket. So Tennessee is able to get it inside and draws a foul. That's on Aaron Barnum, her first. This is Horston at the line. Tennessee a 72% free throw shooting team. That's fourth in the SEC, up from last year. This is not the tempo Arkansas wants to play. Kayla Daniels. Rebound by Marquisha Davis. Second chance opportunity, no go. Tennessee slows it down big time. Like you said, that's what Kentucky did that really helped them beat this Arkansas team. Well, and the key for Tennessee is spacing. Runner by Walker. Chelsea Dungy at the elbow, rebound by Horston. Wow, Arkansas has missed its last five shots. They're not able to get into a rhythm, Arkansas. They like to run and jack up shots quickly. Executing an offense is not something that really Arkansas is comfortable with. Barnum coast to coast, doesn't get the bunny. That's six straight misses now for the Razorbacks. 
And one of the things Arkansas wanted to do was this be a transition game because of the layoff that the Lady Vols have been on. Didn't know what kind of condition they were in. And right now, Tennessee is dominating the tempo. Coach Kittawa turns around right into Barnum. Gets her own rebound. Paint touches is what Kelly Harper wants to see. It's going to be a foul on Kush you know, Cassie just really buries Barnum down low and is able to really stay after it and be on the glass because she's just got such great height advantage. Yeah, Kelly Harper had talked to us about, yeah, we want to get the ball inside more, and it's not just our post getting positioning. We've got to have our guards actively looking for them, too, to get them the ball. Well, in two, Tennessee can move their offense around because they've got big guards. You see Renaya Davis there behind Kelly Harper. She could take a smaller guard and post up. Ray Burrell could do the same. So could Jordan Horston. So you can move around to Mari Key. Make her a passer or bring her to the high post and give guards opportunities to post up. Chelsea Dungy gets both of her free throw attempts. She's seventh in the nation in free throws made, now with 60. Under a minute to go here in the first quarter. Horston definitely has the height advantage on Slocum. That's what I'm talking about, posting up a guard. Horson's got the size advantage. Now, she doesn't want to need to give up space when she's posting it up. She needs to try to, to get a foot in that orange. Arkansas gets its second three, finally. Now they're two of 10 from behind the arc. This one coming from Destiny Slocum, the Oregon State transfer. Cut off the shot clock. The shot clock should be off. And now they make that adjustment. Tennessee will hold for the last shot of the quarter. No, they turn it over. Slocum picked her pocket. And then Michaela Daniels is fouled by Tamari Key with 2.9 seconds left here in the opening quarter. Oh, a turnover. Late in the shot clock. You want to make sure you get the last shot. The last way you want to end a quarter is by turning the ball over and then committing a foul. Arkansas trying to avoid its lowest scoring first quarter this season. Previous mark was 17. They tie it. Close first quarter in Knoxville, Tennessee up by one. Jordan Horston really getting it done using her size that the Lady Balls have. But as long as the Razorbacks have the ability to shoot the three, they're going to keep themselves right in this ball game. SEC Network Women's Basketball is presented by Regents, the official bank of the SEC. And Arkansas got a signature win earlier this season. They were able to take down number four Baylor, the first top five win under Mike Neighbors at Arkansas. The first top five win for Arkansas since 2003. That was a huge victory for this Razorback program. Mike Neighbors had a busy offseason uh, over the summer. He had a baby. He walked his daughter down the aisle, and his son graduated from high school. On top of it being under COVID quarantine, <laughs> so he's quite busy. Arkansas tying its lowest output production in the first quarter with just 17 points, and they've been struggling from three. That could be a good sign. 
They need to. Mike Neighbors wants to get 40% of his offense from the three-point line. So if they get rolling from the perimeter, that will open up things for them to get drives to the basket. And a lot of times that's either layups or get to the free throw line. Hey, Destiny's salary can hit one too. Tennessee's first three-pointer tonight. Uh-oh. I'm sure in that last time out, Mike Neighbor said, listen, you're putting me to sleep over here. That slow pace. He wants things to pick up and go a lot faster. Yeah, Tennessee really did a great job in the first 10 minutes of slowing down the pace against an Arkansas team who likes to get out and run. Salary saves it and gives it back to Renaya Davis. The story of this game is going to be, can Tennessee convert with paint points versus Arkansas scoring from the three-point line? 12 of Tennessee's 23 points have come in the paint. Michaela Daniels, that is three in a row. And it's all off penetration. In order to guard Arkansas, you've got to defend the ball because if you get beat and require help, they're going to find open shooters. This one goes out of bound off of Arkansas. It'll stay with Tennessee. You watch Chelsea Dungy penetrate. And it's Jordan Horston that comes in off Michaela Daniels, leaves her with just enough time to pull the trigger on that three. Davis right over Chelsea Dungy, and she's getting her buckets to go through. That's a really good sign for Tennessee. Dungy. Tennessee ball. We continue to watch Arkansas. If they have to make two to three passes, that's not within the rhythm of what how they like their offense. You saw Wright starting that second quarter. Quick trigger, hit to the corner. Daniels hits a three. Off of penetration, hits another jumper from the corner. That's the speed how Arkansas wants to play. And Tennessee is just lighting it up in the paint. Yeah, Courtney, you were at practice and you were telling me that Tennessee was turning the ball over. Their execution so far in this second quarter has been really good. Hopefully they got it out of their system yesterday. They were doing some five-on-five five work within their first nine possessions of that drill. They had eight turnovers. Well, with so many days off, you can't expect them to be perfect. You got to get the wrinkles out in practice, <laughs> and then it looks a lot better come game time. Kelly Harper is certainly glad it does. Dungy finishes, and one of the best free throw shooters in the nation. She will go to the line. Best at getting to the line, too. We were talking about to Mike Neighbors, and some people might say that some of Chelsea Dungy's shots are forced or bad shots. He doesn't mind them. He said because it's shots that you may think are bad, that really opens up the next two or three shots that she takes. Because you got to respect her. She's going to go. She's going to go strong and forceful to the basket when she does go. Dungy with nine points. Averages almost 20 a game. This is Ramirez. Miss Catawas, she's got to play on balance. She's got to not be so concerned with battling with the defense, but just go set, especially straight down in the middle of the floor, middle of the paint. Make the defense pick a side, and then you can pick the defense apart. Don't wrestle with her. Ramirez off the screen from Barnum. It's poked away into the hands of Renaya Davis. And Suarez traveled. Got a little too excited. 
<laughs> What's the Spanish dance? Is that the tango? Yeah. Because she is from Spain. She is the first player at Tennessee from Spain. Slocum gets caught underneath the basket, somehow gets it to Ramirez. Did you look at how late in the shot clock Tennessee has forced Arkansas to go. Dungy splitting the double team and she gets to the line. She felt that one too. She gets back past and really splits between Burrell and Renaya Davis, but she was reaching down to that left leg. I hope she's okay. She's up, walking over the free throw line. She's already three for three from the charity stripe tonight. Yeah, Chelsea Dungy transferred to Arkansas from Oklahoma. In her sophomore season, she was really all out gangbusters. Her junior season, she took a drop off, but she's back to those kind of numbers that she put on, put up when she first came to Arkansas. Marta Suarez took it away from Erin Barna. Can she keep it though? It goes out of bounds, it will be Tennessee ball. How about the hustle from the freshman? I really like Marta Suarez. I've liked her all season. The maturity that she brings, she's only a freshman, but she plays all out. And a lot of that I believe has to do with her playing on a club team. When she was over in Spain, she said she played against veterans and pros. And that really has helped her to up her game. Yeah, what a get for Tennessee. As Ray Burrell banks one in off the glass. Jalen Mason kicks to Slocum. Baseline. Out of bounds off of Kush Kittawak. And that brings us to our final timeout before the half. Close one in Knoxville. Tennessee leads it 31 to 30. Uh, thank you. We do have a close one here. I miss you guys too. Well, and I took the time because they were asking me so many questions. <laughs> I loved it. I loved it. It's always fun visiting with the ladies. Carolyn, what stood out to you in the first 15 minutes of this game here in Knoxville? Well, it has to do with the Tennessee is able to control the tempo. They have not allowed Arkansas to get out and run. So far now, Arkansas has five three-pointers made. They are five of 15. They normally make almost 12 a game. So can Tennessee keep that three-point efficiency for Arkansas low? Arkansas trying to pick up its second SEC win of the season. This is the first SEC game for Tennessee. Well, Kelly Harper told us she was really disappointed. They had to shut down um, well, they were, had to postpone a Texas, the Texas game, and Kelly really felt like her team was ready and coming back from Austin, Texas. It was almost like a loss because they were looking so forward to playing, and they had to reboot, and they were able to go on and beat Indiana. So they were on a roll before the shutdown. Tatiana kush finishes in the paint where Tennessee has just thrived. 20 points in the paint for the Lady Vols.
broke him on the break. Just one Lady yes, Vol to yes, beat. Yes, and two Razorbacks there, and Jordan Horston is going to take it away with the block. Arkansas had two on one, unable to convert. Davis got away from Michaela Daniels. Renaya Davis has had some easy looks inside as she's finishing. The offensive execution by the Lady Balls and the movement, moving Renaya Davis around and finding opportunities to score in the paint. But you look at the defense, too. Cassie Kishkatawa, very active inside. On the dribble drive, a lot of times you try to pick on the post player that's defending the five inside. She's doing a nice job of hedging over and then recovering back. So Arkansas calls a timeout as Tennessee has scored six straight points. They lead it 35 to 30 here under four minutes to go until the half. Man, every player for Tennessee that has played except for Tamari Key has scored in this game already. I'm very impressed with the execution of the Lady Vols. In that first quarter, they didn't seem to be quite in sync. Sec the second quarter, really using screens and the spacing has been really good to get paint point opportunities. I can tell you too, after watching practice yesterday, I'm surprised too at how much they're flowing because it was definitely a struggle for Tennessee yesterday in practice. But that's why you practice. All right, Cassiata Kushkidawa. Davis picks up her dribble in the paint. Dungey hasn't hit a three yet. It'll stay with Arkansas. That last offensive look, it was a one pass offense. Spacing out, Cassie Keskedawa did a great job of posting inside and went to score one on one. Tennessee with its largest lead here, Arkansas trying to fix that. Dungy still looking for that first three ball. Now 0 for 7. And you know, Arkansas, a team that likes to play up tempo, this is driving them crazy. Jordan Horston just walking the ball down the court. Out of bounds off of Arkansas. That was a good no look. Cassie Kiskatawa has got to be ready for the basketball anytime anybody has the basketball because she's got the size. They're going to be looking to go inside to her every chance they get. And she's been successful three of four from the field tonight. Horson in the corner. And when you need a bucket, you go to Chelsea Dungy. No question. And you can't just say Chelsea Dungy's left-handed because she can go right. But when she does go right, you know what she's going to do? Finish with that left. And that's how she draws the foul. Koshkerwa picks up her second foul. And now Dungy will go back to the free throw line already four of five this evening. Cassie will take a seat with those two fouls. So now you look at Marta Suarez is guarded by Amber Ramirez. I'd take her down low and let her post up. Tennessee has sent Emily Saunders in the game, number 31 in white. And Suarez lost it into the hands of Dungy. Ramirez for two. You know, last year, Ramirez was more known for just the three-point shot. This year, more of a mid-range. Going off a one-two bounce pull-up has been good for her. Ray Burrell hits it as she's going to the floor. Burrell came into this game shooting 45% from the three-point line. Dungy right around Suarez. Saunders on the, on the glass. Tennessee again will slow things up on Arkansas. 
to move the ball around and wait until you get down in the 10 second of the shot clock would be ideal. Or you can do that if Renaya Davis is cutting to the basket. But that's exactly what they did. It got down to 12, 11, and then action to the basket. Keeping control of the pace of this game. Tennessee shooting 55% from the field. Meanwhile, Arkansas shooting just 33%. I think Kelly Harper had wanted to go two for one, but got too late in the shot clock. Now this will allow Arkansas to, to, to take the last shot. So about a second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. They'll put the ball in Dungy's hands. up short 5.1 seconds to go in the half Tennessee just shooting lights out at 53 percent in this opening half yeah Courtney you and I talked about it this is not what I thought the pace of this game would be and having watched Arkansas and how they played against Missouri and how they were able to get up and down the court I wasn't sure that Tennessee could control the tempo but they have done an excellent job in these first two quarters Davis did not get the shot off in time, but Tennessee takes a lead into the locker room here in Knoxville. They lead it 42 to 35 over a top 15 team. Kelly Harper and her Lady Vols looking for their first SEC win of the season. Let's get you to the studio with Alyssa, Steffi, and Drea. Thank you, ladies, as we welcome you. Welcome back to SEC Network Women's Basketball presented by Regions. Tennessee leads at the half over number 13, Arkansas, 42 to 35 in its first SEC game of the season. Courtney Lyle, Carolyn Peck with you. And the Lady Vols certainly controlled the tempo in that first half, and they made Arkansas play at a pace that they're not comfortable. The other thing that the Lady Vols did is they controlled the paint. They were dominant inside, and they used their length to be able to go inside and score over to Arkansas. And a big player that did that, that was Renaya Davis. And she did a nice job of moving around with the offense. The offense was spread and spacing, and she continued to make herself available. That time off an inbounds pass, then a couple of times off back screens, and then even on backdoor cuts, those opportunities have been there very often for Renaya Davis. And this was a player that started out the first four games, took her a little while to catch her rhythm. Last three, she's been red hot, hot, almost 16 points a game, and she had 14 in this first half. Well, Mike Neighbors has a few goals every game for his team. He wants 40% of their points to come from three and 30% to each come from free throws and layups, and it's not distributed like that tonight. 40% coming from three, still low in the free throws and the layup, layup area. And Mike Neighbors said if they don't win two of those three categories more times than not, they don't win ball games. So how does Arkansas pick up the pace and control the pace against this Tennessee team? Well, doing exactly that right there. They've got to cause turnovers. If the ball's going inside, bring the double team and force Tennessee to kick the ball out. And then you either force turnovers or get the rebound and then run in transition. There's going to be a foul before that shot was taken on Marta Suarez. Arkansas is a team that averages almost 10 threes per game. That is 14th in the nation. They've hit five today, but shooting just 27% from behind the arc. And the length of Tennessee has had a lot to do with that. And then also on the dribble drive, they're not helping off shooters. They were really requiring the center, the five player inside to help on penetration. Suarez loses it out of bounds off of Arkansas. Everybody was wondering how Tennessee would fare in this game, even just conditioning-wise against a Razorback team who likes to run because Kelly Harper's team 
only had two full practices leading into this game. They were shut down for seven days due to COVID concerns. And she told us Wednesday that we're going to do a little bit more than they normally do day before game because she wanted them to use that time for some extra conditioning. And props to them. They have looked ready to face the number 13 team in the nation so far. And props to their strength and conditioning coach because during the, sh the shutdown, she really talked about how she relied on her strength and conditioning coach to as much as possible try to keep the players' cardio up. Ray Burrell, what a shot. Slocum on the step back. Arkansas has just struggled to score, shooting 30% from the field. I'm really impressed with Tennessee, too, of the patience and how they have been disciplined to get paint touches. How many games have we done, Courtney, where at times Kelly Harper is screaming for her team to get the ball inside and they still rely on perimeter shots? Not the case today as Tamari Key finishes down low. That is 28 paint points now for Tennessee. They are definitely looking inside tonight. Trying to get past Ray Burrell. No layup. And Burrell's on the move. Here comes Arkansas. There's that crossover pack. Love it. Right to left. You know it's coming. You've read the book on Chelsea Dungey, but it's a difference in knowing it and stopping it. She's got a terrific right to left crossover, gets the finish and the and one opportunity. Dungey with 15 points this evening. None of them have come from behind the arc, but she is five of six from the free throw line. Well, the game plan for the Lady Vols has been good. One on one. You've got to guard your person. And if you're going to get any help, it's going to be from the post player inside. And as long as the play, the post player that Tennessee's helping off of is not in the position to shoot the three, Kelly Harper's like, I'll give you the two. And so she feels like she can match, Tennessee can match Arkansas two for two. Oh, Cassie just got it. it's too late. Renaya Davis fails her out. Second chance points for Tennessee. It's just been the traditional trademark of the Lady Vols since I played in college. The Lady Vols are going to rebound the basketball. Arkansas responds with a three. It's six three ball in the first one for Dungy. Yeah, going back to the rebounding battle, look at the stat sheet right now. Tennessee is out rebounding Arkansas 32 to 19. Wow. And there's the only thing that Arkansas can do about that, you're not going to jump with to match the height of the Lady Vols. So you've got to have a concentrated effort, especially when Arkansas is on defense, to put a body on somebody and do have a, ter a terrific checkout. will set things up for Tennessee. Arkansas adjusted to a zone to try to stop the paint opportunities. Suarez can't get past Taylor Thomas. Dungey was trying to get the foul call, but no whistle. Orson on the ground after it gets it to Burrell. Going to the line. Fouls on Taylor Thomas. This Tennessee team is playing like they are a team that's got to make up some from lost time for being off, giving the extra hustle from Jordan Horson and then the attack from Ray Burrell. 
think about, too, where this Tennessee team is at. We're now, this is their eighth game of the season. They've already had a year under Kelly Harper. They're starting to know what she expects. They're starting to learn how to play with each other, especially Ray Burrell, who's at the free throw line right now. Before this season, Ray Burrell had a new coach the last six years of her career going back to middle school. Even her soccer team, she yeah. said she played for two <laughs> years, and she said, I had a different soccer coach. So it was very comforting to have Kelly Harper, not just last year during her sophomore season, now she knows what to expect coming into her junior season. And I think you can see that from all of Tennessee's players, too, is that they know what Kelly Harper wants out of them, and they're learning to play together in this system. She's leading this team in points, assists, field goal percentage, and just the effort. I loved her coming off the bench last year and wondered what that punch, losing that punch off that bench would be for Tennessee, but it's been beneficial to have her in the starting lineup. Yeah, one of the bright sides was Kelly Harper told us when Ray Burrell was coming off the bench last year, you knew something was going to happen. It might be bad, it might be good, but something was going to change because that energy was going to come out. And that's the key point. She was going to bring energy. That hustle, that effort has always been there when Ray Burrell steps on the court. Well shot by Dungey Thomas. No, still no second chance points for Arkansas. and pulls up at the SEC logo. If I'm Jordan Horson, I'm going right back to Renaya Davis. She gave her one heck of a pass. Davis wasn't able to finish. I get her back down low again. Burrell loses it. That's the 10th turnover for Tennessee. And here's where Arkansas is so good. Oh, man, rattles out. Tennessee is still on front of the number 13 team in the nation here in Knoxville. They lead it 52 to 43. Well, during this last timeout, Kelly Harper was all over the officials. And we think that she wanted a foul called on the other end when Renaya Davis went up. You see Kelly Harper is in the ear of the official there. She is upset. And if there's one player, though she will defend all of her players, it's Renaya Davis. She knows how hard Renaya works, and I believe that she is upset about this play right here and feels like Taylor Thomas got Renaya Davis on the arm, and there was a no call. And then coming down in transition on the other end, there was less contact on Destiny Slocum, but the foul was called. Yeah, they called Jordan Walker for the foul as Destiny Slocum went up for the layup. So Slocum will shoot a couple. <laughs> this was the Destiny, foul on the other end. I think she got her, but I think there was as much, if not a little more contact on Renaya Davis at the other end. I think I'd be upset too. At least the officials know you're there and you're paying attention. <laughs> Make yeah, your presence do. felt, <laughs> Kelly Harper. Well, Renaya Davis is leading Tennessee right now with 16 points and four rebounds and four assists. Slocum gets the first. Six points for Destiny Slocum tonight. You know, Arkansas going back to a man to man. Coach Kittawa calling for the ball. Oh, and she had the duck in all day long. Jordan Walker. Tennessee hits its fourth three. 
like the balance of the Lady Vols. They established in the paint, and now they are being efficient from the three-point line. Shooting 67% from three. Davis slings it over to Jordan Walker on the other side. And it's thrown right back into Renaya Davis. Yeah, that's a no-no right there. Saving the ball out of bounds underneath your opponent's basket. They're playing four on five because you're out of bounds. Let that go. Just let, get your defense set. And I think Horston was the one to get a piece of that shot by Jalen Mason. And Jordan Horston will go to the free throw line. Everything's working Tennessee's way. You see the ball goes out of bounds, and Chelsea Dungey throws it. She gets the assist right to Renai Davis. She pointed at her, said, thank you very much. Horston with 6.7 rebounds, four assists tonight. Well, coming up next, our women's basketball doubleheader action continues in College Station. Number 10, Kentucky taking on number 8, Texas A&M at Reed Arena. You can see it right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. ESPN. After we're done in Knoxville, more points for Renaya Davis. She is a lethal scorer, just like Ryan Howard of Kentucky is a lethal scorer. You'll see her next. It's going to be a great battle, both teams. And Texas A&M undefeated, and they've got two signature wins against Texas and DePaul. Aaliyah Wilson has really emerged as a scorer for the Aggies. And Kentucky has had a crazy week. They've taken down Arkansas, who a ranked team, and then they beat Mississippi State, a ranked team, in overtime on Sunday, and now they face an undefeated ranked Texas A&M team. As Cassiana Kushkidawa gets the bucket, and it's going to the line. Cassie doing a nice job of doing her work early. Great timing on the duck in and then the power move without putting the ball down on the dribble. And a terrific pass by Renaya Davis that led to the score. That was great teamwork. Nice two-man game. Coach Kirwa has just looked different tonight. I mean, you can feel that urgency down low. Well, in talking to Kelly Harper, when practice first started, the one player that she could not speak enough about was Cassie Keshketawa and the conditioning, the shape that she was in, the strength. You know, this is a player that has really been plagued with injuries throughout her career, and she looks extremely strong this year. And she got a piece of that pass, went into the hands of Ray Burrell, who finishes. Tennessee can score in transition, too. Ray Burrell's got 17. And the Lady Vols are clicking on all cylinders. First it was inside, then they knocked down three, and then you got Ray Burrell getting it turned up in transition for Tennessee. Alabama, Ohio State, the national championship game, Monday, January 11th on ESPN. Well, we made it. We will have a national championship football game on Monday, and it's time for our picks. Peck, who are you going with on Monday? It's all about offense, and Mac Jones and the offense has scored at least 31 points a game. Devontae Smith, receiver, and the Nick Saban effect, roll tide, going Look, with Alabama. Yeah, it's pretty good. Um, I, I went to Tennessee, so um, I know what it's like to lose to Alabama. In fact, it's even worse when you're a Tennessee fan and your entire family are Alabama fans. Look how happy my brother and his wife are. This is right after Alabama scored 28 points in the first quarter on Tennessee, and I got to sit there with these two for the rest of the game. Because of that, I'm going Ohio State because I don't want to hear about it, Alabama. I love what Justin Fields is doing. He set all kinds of Ohio State records in that bowl win over Clemson. They've got a chip on their shoulder. I'm going to go with the Buckeyes in this one on Monday night. Come on, Courtney. <laughs> it's the SEC. It just means more. Roll Tide. Or when you're yeah, losing. 
<laughs> Tennessee fans know what I'm talking about. But yeah, look, Alabama has been so impressive. Um, Nick Saban is an incredible coach. This should be a really fun game Monday night, and that's exactly what we want to see. Does a good offense beat a, a good defense? I'm going with points. Well, right now, Tennessee has been able to control Arkansas in this game, although Destiny Slocum lets one fly. Lady Vols came out. They've learned how to control the tempo against this Arkansas team who loves to run and play fast. Held them to 50 points so far. They average about 89 points a game. The thing Tennessee cannot do is get away from what got them this 14-point lead. we got to be patient. I think still getting touches doesn't mean every shot's got to be taken in the paint, but you got to get paint touches before you take that quick outside shot. This will be Destiny Slocum at the line for Arkansas. Slocum now in double figures after hitting a couple of threes. Excuse me, three threes. She's three of three from behind the arc. Drops in two free throws. Arkansas going back to their 1-2-2 two, two zone. Wow, Tennessee has now hit five of its last six shots. Really impressed with the execution and the discipline that Tennessee is playing with. Patience against the zone and then getting it to where that says SEC in the lane. Tennessee has already hit its average for paint points, too. They're at 42 paint points. Well, they normally get about 53% of their total points from the paint, so they have followed the game plan that Kelly Harper implemented coming into tonight. Ray Burrell is feeling it right now. Her game has just become so smooth. Quick shot from Arkansas. Slocum will give it second life. Dungy. Pulls up, and no surprise, going to the line. She's so good at getting there. You know, Ray Burrell reached in. That's unnecessary. She was defending ball side. She's got to stay on the perimeter and trust. I know that Cassie Cascadua has two fouls, and maybe she was trying to protect the big girl, but you've got to have trust that the rotation is going to be there because the last place you want to put Arkansas is to be able to score with, no, with the time not running. Just the second miss from the charity strike tonight for Dungy. Tennessee can hold for the last shot of the third quarter. They got to make sure they don't turn it over. The most important thing you want to do is keep possession and get yourself a good look. Here's Renaya Davis. The fadeaway. That's a pretty good look for Tennessee. And the Lady Vols lead it with just 10 minutes left to play in Knoxville. They're on top of a top 15 team. Well, Ray Burrell, composure, smoothness, comfort. That's what hard work will do for you, number 12, Ray Burrell. Coming up after we're done in Knoxville, you'll get to see Ryan Howard, a candidate for National Player of the Year. She had a huge game against Mississippi State on Sunday. Ryan Howard got turned up in the fourth quarter and overtime. She scored 25 of her 33 points in that time frame. She hit all four of her three-pointers in those last two elements to help seal the deal for the Wildcats and knock off their second-ranked team. 
And Ryan Howard, so impressive. She had 33 points, 10 rebounds, and six assists in that game. 25 of those in the fourth quarter and overtime. But she, hey, she's facing a Texas A&M team who has not lost a game this season. It's going to be a great battle because what Kentucky has this year that they were really lacking last year was an inside game. Dreonna Edwards has been a major impact, and Olivia Owens for the Wildcats that will get to battle with Sierra Johnson and India Jones of the Texas A&M Aggies. I can't wait. I'm going to get my popcorn after this one's over. Yeah, we will take you to College Station as soon as we're done in Knoxville. But how about this score? Tennessee up by 15 points on number 13, Arkansas. What's been the key for Tennessee? Hey, well, they have been at Tennessee for the most part defending one-on-one -on -one and not helping off to make the three-pointer so easy. And you see that time Ray Burrell rotating over, trying to take the charge on Destiny Slocum. I don't believe she got out of the restricted area. Let's see where her heels are. No, it's on the line, and the official made an excellent call. That's going to be called for the block. Slocum starting to come alive here late in this game. Now it's 16 points. Make it 17 points. Oh, Davis, it doesn't get much easier than that. It was a terrific cut, just couldn't finish. Before you were asking, what has Tennessee done? Watch the defense. One-on-one, -on -one, not requiring a lot of help where Arkansas is able to penetrate in and cook kick to the three. Kayla Thomas was on the block for the rebound, draws the foul on Tamari Key. You can see the look of frustration. Kayla Thomas will head to the line looking for her first points tonight. She's got four rebounds. Kush Kittawa back in the game for Tennessee. One of the things Mike Neighbors talked about with the COVID and making sure the contact tracing, you see there's nobody on the free throw line. Everybody back when there's a, a two-shot foul. Trying to stay away and socially distance as much as possible. Ten-point lead for Tennessee. They've led by as many as 17. Orston, a little high-low with Kush Kittawa. Put back by Renaya Davis. What a night. Ramirez at the free throw line rolls out into the hands of Walker. Renaya Davis has just made herself so available, either being the go-to offensively or getting on the glass. That was a tremendous offensive rebound last time down. When she started struggling early on in this season, Kelly Harper said, look, I asked her, are you okay? I'm not worried about the basketball, Renaya Davis. I want to just make sure you're good to go. We believe in you. And eventually that shot went in and she's been hitting them. Well, and try to affect the game in other ways. And what has that been? Going to the glass and rebounding. When you start putting, stop putting so much pressure on yourself to score baskets and focus on other areas to impact, the rest will come, and that's what's happened for Renaya Davis. She has already hit 800 rebounds from her career with her eight rebounds tonight, just two away from a double-double. Tempo has been controlled by the Lady Balls. Going to the line. Well, I mean, we kind of have the roadmap laid out for how you beat Arkansas because we've seen a couple of teams be able to do it. Kentucky really slowed the pace down. 
Well, and what Mike Neighbors has said is that 40, 30, 30, 40 from the three, 30 from the free throw line, 30 from layups. And right now it's only been the three point area that Arkansas has been able to score from. But you see they're below average from the rebounds and the layups. And I think a lot of that has to do with Tennessee taking care of the ball and then also taking the air out of the ball. They have been able to control the tempo of the game. Look at that. She's at 26 points. That's Riri getting it done, ladies and gentlemen. Renaya Davis. <laughs> you love to see it if you're a Lady Vol fan. You look at how Renaya Davis started the season out, and you know she wanted to have a great senior season. And she has the potential to go on to the WNBA next level. And in the first games, I think she was pressing a little bit, but now she has really settled in. 26 points tonight. Her career high is 33. She was just named to the Wooden Midseason Watch List today also. Well, at her length, it's 6'2". She's a guard, but she can play that stretch four. And then she's a rebounding guard as well. Extremely valuable. Well, we've seen that size, too, pay off against this smaller Arkansas team. She's exploited it. Definitely, but there's one thing to have the size, the other thing to have the effort. And Renaya Davis has brought the effort today. It'll be Arkansas basketball. Destiny Salary was chasing after it along with Destiny Slocum. After this layoff, Kelly Harper has to be pleased following a game plan and the energy and effort the Lady Vols have brought so far. Yeah, it's been impressive too, considering that for much of their seven day layoff, there were a few players they could coach. They went over to the practice gym at Pratt Pavilion and put the players on the court and the coaches went to the second floor balcony to coach them. They spread everybody out. That's how they spent a lot of last week. And Ray Burrell even said that from the court, having to turn and look up to the coaches, because remember, they're coaching them with their mask on, so it's not always clear what the coaches are saying to understand what they need to do. You just got to adapt, be ready for anything in this season. Are you supposed to touch the official? <laughs> Kelly Harper reached out to Billy Smith and was like, hang on a second, I got a sub coming. Yeah. <laughs> Well, five and one Florida will host Ole Miss at the O'Connell Center at seven Eastern, six Central on our Tuesday men's basketball doubleheader. Then Vandy takes on number 13, Missouri, right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app on Tuesday. Tennessee fans could uh, breathe a sigh of relief yesterday as the Tennessee men got a win by just five points over Arkansas. That was a nail biter last night. Tennessee, of course, the men's team, Rick Barnes and company picked to win the SEC this year. Again, the patience the Lady Vols are using in executing their offense. They've done a good job of taking care of the basketball, too. I mean, when these two teams played last year, Tennessee had 23 turnovers. Just 10 tonight. And they've dominated on the glass, creating second chance opportunities. You could tell Ray Burrell almost ran over Kelly Harper going after that last one.
Up off the window goes Chelsea Dungey. But again, what is Arkansas having to settle for? Twos. Not getting threes. The rotation is not coming off shooters on the perimeter. Davis slings a pass inside to Kush Kittawa. And Cassie is fouled. Tennessee leads it under five minutes to play. Will the Lady Vols hang on for a ranked win to start SEC play? We'll find out when you come back to Knoxville. SEC women's basketball is presented by Regents, the official bank of the SEC. Pernia Davis has her fourth double-double of the season, 26 points, 10 boards. And she has been active. Pursuing the basketball, making herself available, and especially in the paint. She has really wreaked havoc against the defense of Arkansas. She's used her size. She's 6'2", and not only was she scoring points, but getting rebounds. A double-double. That's her 33rd in her career. She had just tied Tamika Catchings at six as a career double-double for the Lady Vol program. Just passed the Lady Vol great. Davis also has five assists in this game. <laughs> Kushketawa at the line as Tennessee tries to hang on and beat a ranked opponent to open up SEC play. Tennessee in this game so far has done a tremendous job of using their height. They're going to have a height advantage on Sunday when they play LSU. Will they stay as disciplined? They've done a terrific job thus far. There's an offensive foul called on the screen. Destiny Oberg was the one who was called on for Arkansas. That's close. Just that pivot, though. She, she over was moving, and that's why she's called for that offensive foul. Forston pulls up on the baseline. See, that's what Tennessee needs to do. Post player doesn't have to score it every time, but get paint touches, and then it comes back out. Then it's the guard's time. So if you're Arkansas and you're struggling from three, which is one of your specialties, and you're getting dominated in the paint, how do you regroup in a game like this? Because it's going to happen again. I mean, teams are going to be able to slow the pace down. We've seen two teams do it already. Well, the lack of three open three opportunities is because Tennessee is not having to help. Uh, really coming off shooters on penetration. So now Arkansas has got to make sure they've got it. If they're not getting it from the three point line, they've got to get more free throw opportunities and they've got to get more layup score. And Tennessee's just done a nice job defensively of really being very disciplined and sticking to the game plan. Push Kittawa off the glass. She's up to 11 points. See, that's just good defense by Renaya Davis. Jalen Mason in and out. And the other thing, too, Arkansas is going to have to find second chance opportunities. They're getting away with, if they're making shots, it's great. If they're not, They've tried to, got to try to at least send two or three to the board to try to get some offensive rebound. <laughs> After watching Tennessee play, against West Virginia, even against Indiana. This is the most disciplined I have seen them play. A very impressive output, especially after having been off for a week. Yeah, what a showing by Tennessee. 
And look at the categories, too, where they're dominating this game. They've slowed the pace down, but also they're winning the rebounding battle. Their second chance points and points in the paint. That's all helped Tennessee have success tonight. Well, and that's got to be really their theme all season. They've got to own the boards. They've got to dominate the paint. You've got to be efficient in the paint. And you've got to play hard on the glass. And that's exactly what they've done. Tennessee is one of the best rebounding teams in the nation. They are fifth in the nation in rebounding margin. We've seen a huge margin in this game. Also 10th in the nation in rebounds per game. They average almost 50 boards a game. I know a goal of this team is to get back to the NCAA tournament. And if they continue to rebound the way that they are and using their length, they're on the right track. Tennessee is the only program to have made every NCAA tournament. All 38. And the contribution of post players, Cassie Keshkatawa has been huge for the Lady Balls. Well, gymnastics takes over the SEC network every Friday night. And tomorrow, our gymnastics doubleheader starts in Athens with the number 10 Georgia Gym Dogs hosting number 16 Missouri at Stegman Coliseum at 7 Eastern. Then number 15 Arkansas and number 3 LSU from Baton Rouge. I'll be on the call for the Missouri-Georgia meet. Really excited to see this Missouri team. A couple of freshmen are going to make a big impact for the Tigers this year. Can't wait to hear you call it. She stuck the dismount. Yeah. <laughs> Peck, are you a sheep a sheep jump or a wolf turn kind of gal on the beam? A uh, wolf turn all day long. Yeah, I knew it. <laughs> if you haven't checked out Friday Night Heights, though, definitely tune in right here on the SEC Network tomorrow. Some incredible athletes in the SEC. How wide is that, that balance beam? Oh, I don't remember exactly. It's not very it's much. It's not very the, wide? No, and they do flips and tricks, and it is amazing what these women can do on the balance beam. Absolutely incredible. Don't forget, coming up next, a top 25 battle in the SEC. Kentucky at Texas A&M. Undefeated Texas A&M will get you there as soon as we're done in Knoxville. An impressive showing by the Lady Vols. We talked about their next game is against LSU on Sunday. Arkansas has got to face number eight ranked Texas A&M. Didn't get any easier test. in the SEC. Yeah, and I would say A&M has a size advantage in that game too, just like Tennessee did tonight over Arkansas. A three from Ramirez. Ramirez with 15 points. What Tennessee has done defensively, a lot of times you think Arkansas shoots the three so well that you try to deny or force back door. Tennessee didn't do that. They let him catch it on the perimeter and then really buckle down one on one. And it was accountability defense. to Davis. There's one minute left in the game. He told me Tennessee had been off for a week, that Kelly Arper had had one practice in the last 16 days before last Tuesday. I wouldn't believe with the discipline that the Lady Vols played with, the intensity today, and they followed the game plan terrifically. Jordan Horston tacks on a couple more. She's in double figures, one of four Lady Vols, one of three Lady, yeah, four Lady Vols, excuse me, in double figures in this game. Tennessee locked in and ready to play a top 15 team today. And Ray Burrell comes up limping after that layup.
Hopefully she just cramped up a little bit. Remember, Tennessee hasn't played, as we said, in, in a long time. It's been about 10 days. And she's played hard. Can understand it. Lack of conditioning, but they're catching up. You could They didn't look winded to me today. Not at all. Burrell tied her career high with 26 points for the second time this season. Renaya Davis with a double-double, 26 points to her credit. And Tennessee's first win in SEC play this year is going to be over number 13, Arkansas. Their second ranked win of the season. Tennessee did a nice job of defending the three and taking advantage in the paint. Terrific game plan by Coach Kelly Harper. What a win for the Lady Vols. They look like they're in midseason form, even though they've had a week off. Tennessee beats Arkansas 88 to 73 in Knoxville. A big game coming up next. Kentucky and Texas A&M. Alyssa, Steffi, and Drea will get you set for that one. Let's send it back to the studio.